At Laudal, we believe in helping save lives. Our vision is that no one should die or be disabled unnecessarily during birth or from sudden illness, trauma, or medical errors. From the beginning, we've been a company that's about sharing knowledge and best practices. We work with doctors, nurses, educators, researchers, as well as leading public and private organizations from around the world. We deliver more than technology. We deliver trust. We offer experience, expertise, and access to the best minds in the industry. Our innovations are focused on impact. By using evidence-based solutions, and collaborating with researchers and partners. We develop products and programs to help increase survival from cardiac arrest, to improve patient safety, and to help save the lives of mothers and babies at birth. But our products and programs don't save lives. People do. We help healthcare providers to be competent and confident. We help first responders to be ready to act under pressure. And we help ordinary people learn to save lives. We're more than 1,500 people in 24 countries working towards a common mission. We believe that if we create value to society at large and do our job well, the economic results will follow and allow us to build a stronger company with time. Our mission is helping save lives, one life at a time.
uh, skilled and trained, they've never tried it before, and they don't know the medical details, and we help train them by uh, offering them cheap products and also access to resources. And to achieve these goals, we need good IT systems to support our business. So we've integrated lots of our systems together. This is a snapshot of some of the systems that you see in our company that are integrated, that talk to each other, and uh, by doing so, we believe that we can cooperate better and we, we do less manual work. So where does the board come in here? Well, uh, two years ago, we decided to go for board. It was, the, the decision was primarily because we wanted to replace our financial reporting system. Uh, the financial reporting system that we had at the time was very cumbersome to use. Uh, there was lots of uh, extra stuff that we needed to do. It wasn't supported by the vendor anymore, and we needed to find something new. So we did one vendor round, and we found some vendors, and then with the help of Gartner, we did another vendor round, and we found some additional partners, and uh, we landed with Board. One of the key criteria was that it should be best in class, and it should be cloud. So for every project that we run, hold on. So for every project that we run, we, uh, we have to prioritize between quality time and cost. And for our projects and this project, data quality was key. Without the quality that we needed, it wouldn't matter, it wouldn't be a good system. So the time and cost would be the variables and quality had to be delivered. We had four projects that we wanted to implement. We had board financial consolidation, which was to deliver uh, financial statements to the board uh, and, to the, uh, and to the authorities. We had have, we have managerial reporting, which was to deliver uh, financial reporting to our internals, as in managers and keeping uh, KPIs. We had project budgeting and reporting, which was, which was to provide the uh, project managers, such as myself, uh, with finance on uh, our project and how we're doing. And we also had a project sales marketing and service forecast, which was to, uh, for them to be able to put in their sales forecast and to provide information for our supply chain to be able to deliver on those forecasts. So how did these projects go? Well, it started out really well, as all projects do. And, uh, after a couple of months, we realized that the data that we had coming from their old system wasn't really good enough to be put into the new system. So that's why there's a yellow uh, icon there. There were some things that we needed to fix. At the same time, we started managerial reporting and project budgeting, and those were okay. But we were also experienced a little bit more cumbersome because the data that we were getting for uh, the board financial consolidation system wasn't really good in our ERP systems. So we needed to have a look at what we could do. We were also looking at, so the time uh, was getting closer and closer to the end. Managerial reporting was also now seeing that there were some issues with our data quality. And we hit a uh, hurdle. I went to the project board, I said, we're not gonna make this in time. Our quality of data is not good enough. And they gave us an extension of time till October 2018. Now, a month later, I was sitting with my project board, and my CFO, very smart guy, he opens his mouth and says, hold on guys, this isn't good enough. We're gonna have to do something with our master data. And what he basically did is he introduced a scope of explosion to us. Because he said that if the master data that we have right now isn't good enough, the project's never gonna be good enough. And with that, did that be good enough? I'm not really, I'm not going live with board. So what do we need to do? We need to change something called product group into product key. Uh, product group, uh, product key is, was, you couldn't do any direct mapping between these two terms. And product group was currently a master data in all <coughs> systems, in our CRM systems, in our PLM systems, in our ERP systems, so it was a big change. And we also couldn't get rid of product group because we needed it for historical trends <coughs> and sales provisions was based on it. 
So there was a whole new project that I had to initiate. A project that would change the infrastructure of how our systems integrate with each other. At the time, we had Agile, which was our PLM system, integrated through a black box to QAD, which was our ERP system. And we moved over to using a master data management system called Dalbumi that integrated everything. It contained the master data from the core systems and pushed it out to those systems that needed it. This project uh, was high risk. We had six months to complete because we wanted good data from 2019 onwards. So how did we go? Well, project budgeting and reporting, it wasn't affected by the product group. So that went, that went fantastically. The new project went fantastically as well. We managed to change the, the, the data structure in all the systems and do all the integrations. And therefore, we could also complete the sales marketing service forecast board financial consultation and the managerial report. So now we're in much better shape. We have the financial figures to support our business. We have the KPIs presented to management. Uh, the project managers can use the systems to drill down and see where are my costs coming from. They can go so far to like that they can actually pick up the invoice itself and bring it up. So it's a huge improvement. But we would have never, ever changed our master data unless we had seen the transparency that Ward gave us to start. And to take you through some of the details in those modules, I'd like to give the stage to Lars. Thank you. So, as uh, Robin said, Lara was looking for a new financial consolidation, reporting, and forecasting tool. The goal for the project was to automate as much of the processes as possible so that the users can spend their time in analyzing and understanding the data that is presented. We also wanted to bring in more information, more dimension, to make analysis better. So as we see here in our overview, the reconciliation database and managerial database is uh, collects data from our ERP system. The difference is that in the managerial we have more information and also the managerial is enriched with data from our data warehouse, Cornerstone and Mintin. What's important to see here is that we have the reconciliation database and that means that uh, all the data is reconciled here so that we are absolutely sure that the BFC, the statutory, and managerial reporting is aligned. We have a decentralized loading process, meaning that uh, all the users that uh, don't have uh, QED, they load the uh, data with, with, uh, using CSV files. They load data themselves and they follow our process and validate data themselves. We have smart tech, smart data quality checks. We have the IC reconciliation. Immediately after the CSV files are loaded, this is updated. And of course, for the data from QED, this is updated every night. Here the users can access and see and their trading partners and clicking to go down into more details. We have a trial balance check so that the users can immediately see that their, what they're loading is uh, correct and balances. Then we have the BFC man versus managerial reconciliation. And here also the users see themselves that the data that is sent for statutory is the same data that will be viewed by management in managerial. We have discarded record logs. Again, the users will have... Uh, so this is for the users that use CSV files. And again, they will uh, get an, a, a log 
so to explain, so they can understand and analyze what the what they have done wrong, and then reload or come back to headquarters if they think that something needs to be updated in the reconciliation data. We have a posting date check for the users that uh, operate on the group level, so that they can. Uh, analyze and monitor to see if someone has posted anything in a period that has been closed. Again, by easy drill down, by company, by month. So at the end, when we validated every month, we validate 33 legal entities in board by following these four steps. So now, to have a little look into the reconciliation database. Here we see that we have a centralized monitor so that the users can analyze and understand the whole process. Here we set the month for the reporting. We have different dimensions that are important for the internal LADA's internal reporting. And we also control these here throughout the whole process. In the data validation, here the people can monitor and view the process for all the companies to see how they're doing, to see what's been validated, who's not validated, and also to see how, what the data looks like. Here they also have the option to open up periods again. <coughs> then we have a data normalization. So here we have built in equity in the investments check. Again, reports so that the users can easily understand and see what has happened. We have aggregated dimension management, meaning that uh, in one place we do all the aggregations for all of the reports that are needed. A manual adjustment, a split account process, and an IG uh, adjustment IC sales versus COGS. This is for elimination purposes. At the end of this, we have a final check which sums up everything so that the users that the, on group level can look and monitor to see and understand that everything looks okay. You see that we have uh, three boxes below the final check. <coughs> Profit elimination, goodwill depreciation, and something we call RPI p and class. Uh, we have them below here because it means that the data for data normalization is automatically moved into BFC. But the three last points, we have to do adjustments in BFC. But again, reports are created, they're updated, they're dynamic, so that the users immediately get the information that they need. Then to look at the BFC and managerial. So in BFC, we follow the built-in process that's already there. We consolidate 96 reporting units, 16 nodes, 19 currencies, 285 cost centers, and 229 product groups. Then to look into the managerial. In managerial, this workflow is automatically executed every night. So in this workflow, we have a split account process, which moves a cost from indirect to direct. We have a profit in stock elimination. We have DCOX, MCOX, which is a land of internal reporting purposes for to understand manufacturing, supply chain, and the external sales. We have the plan rate adjustments to eliminate FX. Then we have a translation to mock on currencies, back to knock. Again, we see the IG sales versus COGS, which is for eliminations. Then we have a multi-currency calculation. This means that uh, uh, all of the reports, all of the data, which has been translated to knock, can now also be viewed in all of the currencies that the company use. We have something called contribution. For so this meaning that some of the companies that the LADA owns, we don't own 
So again, by building in a procedure, the users only need to add the percentages that uh, Lada owns, and the procedure takes care of the rest. We have, uh, and then we have, of course, sister company uh, eliminations. All of the processes that I mentioned now are automatically executed every night. That means that every day when we come to work, we enter board and we have the latest data from yesterday already within this workflow. So then to take a look at the project budgeting and sales marketing. The, pro the project budgeting and reporting is a step-by-step -step process that's been built. Here the users follow the different processes that they are told to do, and they end up with a budget summary. And again, with the forecast figures, you see that we follow a given step-by-step -step process, which ends up in a forecast summary. And here is just an example of a report that the users have after they follow this process. <coughs> then we have the sales marketing and service forecast. Here again, same idea, follow a step-by-step -step process to enter in data. And you see, as you see here, we have simultaneous data entry from 33 countries, scenario simulation, multi-currency data entry, auditability, and validation workflow. And then again, just uh, an example of a report that the users can see, analyze, to understand. And with that, that's for me. So now I hand it over to Guido. matters behind the learner experience. Uh, the first one is technology. In our work, uh, every day we come across uh, information silos. As you know, information silo is an uh, information system that is not able to freely communicate with other systems. Board makes possible to create a unique data layer where information is translated in each business unit according with the real needs of the decision makers. So, um, but to be honest, this is, this is not enough. Uh, in my understanding, we need another ingredient, another component. So the second point is method. Uh, in the, behind, the, behind what Robin told us before, there's a continuous um, fine tuning of the data model in board um, based on the everlasting dialogue between <coughs> processes and technology. We board nowadays actually we deal with a, a project about knowledge management, where knowledge is something that typically belongs to a life organism. For this reason, every day, every week, every year, we have to face change. Thanks to board flexibility, we have the possibility to accommodate change somewhere in the middle between absolute agility and anarchy. We have to be wise in implementing board because we have to balance both rigidity and anarchy. We need both. This is the, the heart of the matter when we mention the agile delivery method. So, the last point, the third one, I'm concluding. Last but not least, it's people. Uh, we have some, with Whitboard, we have found a solution for bringing it together, IT skills and business skills in one person. This person will be, for a time, the consultant. In the group, the person will be the to work out. Um, because he or she has to be at the same time technological expert and business process analyst. But 
that must also be in the company a manager or a analyst, someone that has to transfer his professional knowledge into the business, into the data model. Even when they have no IT skills, this is the real opportunity, this is the big chance. So what I'm starting to mean is that in uh, every project, as well as in uh, every company, in data integration, what that really makes the difference is people. Thanks, Robin, thanks, Lars, thank you everyone for your time. Thank you.